enthusiasm and you have to develop further books if you are not developing that is your risk. Shastras can lead you to a particular stage. Lead theory says that if you are mature, see we have seen lot of uh, young children or some uh, <coughs> growing babes being carried by their older members. <coughs> the elders of the family or the old men, they used to carry their siblings. And we are also in turn seeing that grown people, they are carrying their old people uh, with walking sticks to temple. Like the Shastras, they lead you to maturity and a mature person should preserve, nurture, nourish and develop Shastras which nobody is doing at all. So, lead theory says that you have been made mature by the Shastras and in turn as a token of your indebted gratitude and as a magnitude of your reverence, reference and deference towards those Shastras, it is your duty, it is your bounded, bonded, bondage duty that you have to take care that Shastras are preserved, reserved, subserved and nourished with more mature investigations and also in widening the framework of Shastras. That is known as lead theory. So I have given the meaning in the Shastra and you have to take more books by means of Yakhyana, Bhashya, Sutra, Vritti, Anuvyakhyana, Akhyana, Aitihya, Pradarshana, Nidarshana, Pragamana, Gamana, Vivarana, Tika, Tippani. These things you have to enlarge the Shastras and make it reach the society. So this is known as the lead theory. So on the basis of these things, they are told that Shastras are alive and they are complete by four <coughs> methods. Then coming to the second point, that is volume of Shastras. <coughs> First is, <coughs> why we are celebrating the scientific heritage? Is it a practical machinery or a pride medallion? In most of the occasions, it is just a pride medallion. And there is nothing, see, before 1000 years we were like that. That is just a memory, just as we are preserving our first anniversary dress. A lot of people have seen that they are <laughs> preserving their first anniversary dress and their baby photos just for their reminiscences. It is just a reminiscent recall. Is it just a pride medallion? Just a, if it is a stagnant medallion or just a reminiscent recall, then that has no purpose at all and you can celebrate any number of times. Then it should go. There are three theories in civilizations. First of all, we must understand cultural anthropology, social anthropology, civilization studies, ethnology, bioethnology, socio-ethnology and eco-ethnology without which we cannot understand heritage at all. The same heritage we can prove more scientifically in a different session with lot of people in various other angles of perception. But this thing is very, 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 very traditional. Certainly it should be traditional, but it is not novel, it is not deep, <coughs> it is not dense, it is not direct. That is the problem. So, here, this particular volume, innumerable treatises, instead of being just a price medallion, that must be properly nurtured. How it is possible? There are three theories of civilization I told. One is a slope theory, second is a steadfast movement <coughs> or a steady theory, and the third thing is a surpass theory. Lot of people, they started in higher civilizations. When all the people were roaming like nomads, when these people, they were having no shelter, no structure of living, these people, they were living in good art, architectural, infrastructural basis. But while starting like that, immediately they are coming to post-nomadic stage. That is not a slope of civilizations in which we started earlier, it is just like the story of the sleeping uh, rabbit and the moving tortoise. So, we have started before thousands of years. But the rate of growth, can you find out the rate of growth and the present status? It is very difficult. So we are in the slope of civilization status, number one. Number two, there are a lot of steadfast civilizations, like German civilization and Greek civilization, they are steadfast. And surpassing civilizations, the Western community, most of the people, they were nomadic and nude. They know only nomadic and nude. Now those people are in a position to teach all of us. They are in the surpass uh, graphics. So, in the graph of slope, steady and surpass levels, we are in a slope level and we have to reinstall our status. So, civilization, talking about something which happened before thousands of years, for which there is no rate of growth, for which there is no rate of gravity, for which there is no rate of permeation, certainly it is a pride medallion and it is not a proper missionary for development of our culture. Number two, we must certainly do something that is known as comparative evaluation chart, comparative structure evaluation chart. I am saying one, one thing, somebody can do that task and then they will see how far they have been just uh, taken away by chauvinism I, by means of a dogmatic <coughs> of just attachment towards one's own culture. You have to understand, how to prepare a comparative chart? There are three levels of sciences. One thing is pure sciences, 
Second thing is social sciences. Third thing is known as subtle sciences. We used to call it as salient sciences. First thing is known as salient sciences. The second grade is known as social sciences or shrewd sciences. Third thing is known as subtle sciences. Uh, let us just come to the normal sciences which we call, which are known as salient sciences. Number one, mathematics, then logics, geology, geometry, <coughs> then botany, zoology, medical sciences, marine engineering, aeronautical engineering, civil engineering, space exploration, all of these things are just salient sciences, developing sciences which we are seeing now. You prepare a table, you call out all information from the treatises available in the Shastras and you also evaluate the stage of growth of modern science in various universities and various research institutes and you can see how far we are and how far they are. It is an evaluation chart and number two are social sciences. Number one, psychology, political philosophy, economics, sociology, sociography, demography, all of these things are social sciences. Third thing, occult sciences or the subtle sciences. Subtle sciences, the Western world cannot understand at all. Huh? Eschatology, metaphysics, aritology, thaumatology, cosmology. Cosmology they are doing, but it is theocosmology, theocosmogony, epistemology. All of these various sciences are subtle so that they have not reached at all. But in the practical scenario in which everybody is going in a race, where you are, somebody is running a race, which is there in a common scenario, if you are saying that I am running a race near my home and I will be first in that. That is a common function that is going on. And if you can say that in my house I can run a race and I will be the first, that is a little different. The silent features of modern science, we have to create, prepare an evaluation, comparative evaluation table between the structures of traditional modern sciences and we have to prove that we are equivalent and we are hypervalent. We are advanced, we have to prove. We have to call out from the scriptures. For each and everything we must say that we had a base or we have an inspiration or we have a source or we have the direct information or we have the rectification of the errors and blunders of even modern science. That must be a tabulation. But I have not seen any tabulation at all in my life. Hundreds of uh, uh, the such invitations I have got and hundreds of informations we have delivered and hundreds of conferences we have attended and organized. Certainly if somebody is there with us, if there is a project of multiversity, certainly we can sit and do where we are earlier uh, predictors, where we are equivalent predictors, where we are forerunners for everybody, where we are in advance in other these people, unless there is an evaluation chart and saying that we have, uh, earlier we have mentioned about eclipse, we know that uh, the theory is heliocentric and earth is rotating, sun is there, how long, how many years will be saying the same thing? Whereas in heliography and uh, helioelectronics and uh, helionic sciences, how far they have been advancing? So these advancements, either you must have a base, otherwise you must have the information. Third thing, otherwise you must prove what they are doing or you must do something which they have failed to do and which they are struggling to do. Unless we are having any theoretical or practical demonstration, it is a group organization in which all of the people, the nationalists, they can console themselves by clapping the hands and shedding tears. To practically predict this thing, we need an evaluation table and I am not joking at all. This evaluation table is very much essential. There are three stagnations. One is the system stagnation. Second is status stagnation and third thing is the research stagnation. Lot of treatises are there which are stagnated, which have not reached the topic at all, number one. Number two, lot of systems they have reached like Bhagavad Gita, but the status has not uh, reached the society. How many people are having Bhagavad Gita? If you see Gorakhpur Press, uh, they mentioned it is the 36th edition, 2 lakhs copies. But what is the status of Bhagavad Gita? 2 lakh people have they practiced Bhagavad Gita? The status which is not there. Number three, some status is there in some science in which they are doing by Vijnana Bharati. What is further research? So research is stagnate, systems are stagnate and the systems are not even stagnate but their status is stagnate in society. These three stagnations must be <coughs> overruled by real research by Vijnana Bharati and India International University which has taken the oath and which has taken also the uh, sanctified baths uh, to be more committed upon such achievements. Certainly it should be taken as a lifetime project. It is not a part-time job. They should take it like that. Number one, I have already defined heritage. What is the viability of heritage? There is a wonderful definition for heritage in class. <coughs> it must be noted. It is very exhaustive. Heritage is the continuous and ever increasing flow and permeation of order. It is ever increasing and continuous flow and permeation of the systems of order with